Um, as I was preparing the, the bulletin cover, of course, Connie does the lion's work of this. Thank you, Connie. Uh, I always pick the picture that it goes on the front. So if, pull up yours, look and see what it is. Well, the first one I picked actually was a Lego version of uh, King David and Solomon. And it says, uh, David is, says here, I'm going the way of all the earth. Obey the commandments of Yahweh. Your God is written in the law of Moses so that you may prosper in all you do. I, I wasn't sure if y'all were ready for Lego on the front, so I didn't do that one. I did this one. But then I posted both of them on Facebook, and a very cheeky friend of mine in New York um, modified it, and, and he used the picture that we have and the quote from the other one. But then David is also saying to Solomon, and one more thing. Watch out for that Sandy. So <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, and I told my husband he was—he was like, "That's not funny." <laughs> That's I hope you enjoyed that. I, yeah, anyway, moving on. Let us pray. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, our sermon this morning is the final in our series on King David. This morning we are looking at legacy, the legacy that David left to his descendants and ultimately to us. But we'll also look at our own personal legacies and the legacy that our own church will leave in this community. <clears throat> well, let's begin with the definition, right? Merriam-Webster's says that legacy is a gift by will, especially of money or other personal property, a bequest, or something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or predecessor from the past. Our purpose today will be looking at the second definition something transmitted by or received from an ancestor, something we will transmit or share with others after we are long gone. Now, as we begin, I want you to think about Boulder City and what it would look like if our church closed today. Can you imagine what that would look like? What might it look like in a year from now? or 10 years from now, or 20 years from now. It's not a very pretty picture, is it? But what if we continue to grow and serve and live and love? What might our town look like 10 years from now, or 20, or 50? This morning, I would like to share with you four ways to leave a legacy, the legacy of excellence, of encouragement, of purpose, and of love. A legacy of excellence means that we strive to be our best every day. St. Francis of Assisi said, it's no use walking anywhere to preach unless your preaching is your walking. As we strive for excellence, we also inspire excellence in others. We serve as role models to our children, to our friends and colleagues. One person in pursuit of excellence raises the standard and behavior of everyone around them. Our life is our greatest legacy. We only have this one life, and it's up to us to give all that we can. King David left a legacy of excellence. David lived his life to his own utmost potential. Under his leadership, the tribes of Israel were united, and they defeated their enemy, the Philistines, who had threatened them for years. He made Jerusalem the political and spiritual center of Israel. The Ark of the Covenant was given an honored place in the new capital under his reign. And under David's military leadership, Israel grew, their territory grew to its largest dimensions in history. 
During this time, the nation of Israel was the dominant power in the ancient Near East. David was a king and left a legacy of excellence for his son Solomon to follow. Our church is leaving a legacy of excellence by being a leader in our community. We have servants volunteering in a number of local charities, bringing food to the homebound, assisting at the senior center and serving meals to homeless families through Family Promise. We have helped to create an organization to help our LGBTQ sisters and brothers and their families. We have organized a peace protest with uh, women in black and are now offering a pumpkin patch to bring a little bit of fall festivities to our community. And we strive to serve in excellence in all that we do. Our second legacy of encouragement it is the legacy of encouragement. And that is a choice that we all have to lift one another up or to bring them down. Are we a ray of sunshine as we enter a room or are we a dark cloud of negativity that, that seems to follow us wherever we go? In 20 years, will others remember how you encourage them or discourage them? I remember when I was in college, a couple years ago, my uh, girlfriend's mother passed away. And I was with her when she got the phone call letting her know that her mother had died. She had been very ill and she knew that it was coming. <coughs> I sat with her as she cried and, and screamed, as you can imagine, receiving that news. It was a defining moment for her. For me, it was an opportunity to be at the right place at the right time, bringing comfort to a friend. But more than 20 years later, when I saw her, after I hadn't seen her for many, many years, she reminded me of that day, and frankly, I had forgotten it. She told me how much my being there had helped her in that moment. Who will we encourage today? We can all strive to be that person that 5, 10, 15, or 20 years from now, someone will call and say, thank you. I couldn't have done it without you. Now laying on his deathbed, David encouraged his son with the deliverance of his final testimony, his final oracle to his son, the new king. David said, be strong. Be courageous and walk in the ways of the Lord. Follow the commandments and ordinances and testimonies. You will prosper and you will prosper in all that you do, wherever you turn. But that's pretty good advice, isn't it, from a father to a son? Now David also lived his life encouraging others with his own legacy of 73 of our Psalms a lasting legacy of encouragement for all of us today. This week I was encouraged myself by David's work. I recently have felt under uh, a spiritual attack. Um, I don't know if any of you have engaged or felt engaged in spiritual warfare, but uh, it's not necessarily a, a fun thing, but as we step out in faith, and as we reach new people for Christ, we will meet with opposition, with resistance and challenges. I've seen it time and time again in the churches and organizations that I've been involved with as we come into alignment with the will of God. Often, opposition rears its ugly head. I, I have to believe, church, that we are onto something big here we are listening to and following God's will for our church. And we will face <clears throat> challenges, but they are not challenges that we can't overcome. Because our God is greater than any opposition or challenge that we come up against. Now let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now I'm not going to tell you how my outlook was down all week long and how this morning it took almost an hour to print out the documents for today. I won't tell you about my computer challenges. 
I also won't tell you um, about the email that I received from a colleague berating me for not helping me. He was sure that I was quite ungrace filled and suggested maybe I had something against him. I won't bring that up. I'll save that for another day. But I do want to share an experience that JJ had this week. Friday night, he was coming home from work with the church flatbed trailer full. How many were there? 20. 20 pallets that we need for our pumpkin patch. And as he was coming up US 95, 95, yeah, uh, right near Horizon, he got a flat tire on the church trailer. Trailer's full of pallets. He pulls over, and as he tries to get everything ready to change the tire, he discovered that not only was there a flat on the trailer, the spare was flat, and he didn't have the correct size wrench to fix it anyway. So he unhooked the trailer, drove up to the auto parts store, got the new wrench so he could remove both the spare and the flat tire, which he did. Three hours later, he arrived home and planned to get it fixed Saturday morning. This was yesterday. So yesterday morning at the crack of dawn, I think they opened at 7, he was at Big O Tire. Please fix my tires. 11 o'clock, got them fixed, took them back to the trailer. And as he arrived, he noticed the one good tire was awesome. <laughs> That's all right. He's got the spare, he's got two new tires, right? So he put the one spare, or the one good tire on, <clears throat> took the old one off, tried to put the spare on, it didn't fit. The wheel was not the right wheel for... So back to Big O he went. This time to the Henderson store. And when he arrived, of course it's busy, it's Saturday afternoon. And they said it'd be at least an hour. There are three or four people ahead of him. And by the way, they would have to charge him $20 to switch this brand new tire to the new wheel, the wheel that would fit. JJ got a little frustrated. frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Impatient. And tried to convince them that really couldn't they help. And as the man returned his frustration with a little snarkiness, J.J. Betta apologized, owned his own frustration at this, you know, 24-hour ordeal with all of these tires, and he sat down to wait. Well, at that point, he called me with an update, and I was able to share with him at that exact moment I was sitting in my office preparing this message. And I was on this portion about leaving a legacy of encouragement. And I had just found Psalm 141. And I read it to myself, and it was exactly what I needed with that understanding that I'm feeling under spiritual attack. I'd like to share just a portion of it with you. I invite you to write down Psalm 141 and read the entire thing later. But it is entitled, A Prayer for preservation from evil. A Psalm of David. I call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to me. Give ear to my voice when I call you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. But my eyes are turned toward you, O God, my Lord. In you I seek refuge. Do not leave me defenseless. Keep me from the trap that they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall in their own nets while I alone escape. Both of us were calmed by that encouragement that we received from the psalm at about five minutes later, you can't make this stuff up, JJ called me back and he said the man that he had been talking to went ahead and fixed the tire and brought them out to him, brought it out to him. He was there maybe five, ten minutes. David's legacy of encouragement is a gift to all of us today. 
And as a church community, we have to ask ourselves, how can we be a bit of encouragement for others? Well, I would say that our own after-school program is an opportunity for us to leave a legacy of encouragement. The children are learning about God and his son Jesus and are spending time together having a fun afternoon. And there is no greater legacy that we can leave than in the lives of our children, introducing them to God and helping them to have a firm foundation as they grow <coughs> and learn. And that leads me to the legacy of purpose. And that happens when we are energized to use our strengths and talents for a purpose beyond ourselves. To leave a legacy of purpose, we are to make our life about something bigger than ourselves. And we all know we're not going to live forever, but we can live on through the legacy that we leave and that positive impact that we make on the world. Just this week, the P Flight chapter of Boulder City decided that it would create a, a youth program, a P Flight youth, because the high school this year is not uh, able to host a gay straight alliance. Many volunteers from our church who are dedicated to this purpose have come together to put on an event and hopefully develop an ongoing program where these LGBTQ youth and their friends can come and hang out and have a safe environment to do so. David's legacy of purpose was to continue to build on the legacy that he already had laid of encouragement and excellence, and it was his purpose to put Solomon into power so he would continue the reign that David had enjoyed. Now the second part of our scripture this morning shows David telling Solomon how to manage two very specific situations. David was giving Solomon his very best foreign policy advice. And then that leads us to the final legacy, the legacy of love. David loved Bathsheba and he demonstrated his love for her in the lasting legacy of anointing their son, Solomon, as king. Now when I think of a legacy of love, I can't help but think about my own dad. And although he rarely said the words, I love you, he showed me he loved me every day. He was always there for me. He pushed me when I needed it, sometimes in spite of myself. He demonstrated kindness to others. He was a man who would give the shirt off of his back, and I am very thankful that I received that legacy from him, that sincere desire to demonstrate love to others. We are all asked to share love with one another, and it's probably the simplest thing we can do. It's simple, but it's not easy. We are called to show God's love, and that love that flows through us to those we come in contact with and those who need it the most. Our church is often described as, as welcoming and friendly. And I like to think that we demonstrate a genuine love for one another. I see love demonstrated when I see people taking a meal to somebody who is ill, or driving a friend back and forth to the hospital for chemo treatments. I've seen people drive a friend to and from work when they were unable to drive. I've seen others help with a home remodeling project, paying off loans, providing gas and grocery money, and support to one another as we go through our own difficult times. Our church community is a family. Only it's better than most families because we don't seem to have the family drama that often goes along with families, right? We have what I would consider a very loving, functional family, right? That sounds pretty good. And we are called to leave a legacy, both for ourselves personally and as a church community. And I would ask that you would take some time this week to pray about and think about how you are creating a lasting legacy. And I challenge you and myself.
to evaluate the legacies and see if there's anything missing. Is there anything else that we can do? Now this morning, as you leave, I'd like us to create a small legacy. I've printed out this tree. It's a legacy tree. And outside in the uh, foyer, there are six different green um, ink pads. And if you would put your finger on one of the ink pads and then press your finger onto the tree, your fingerprint will stay and be a leaf. And this will be a, a small legacy that we can leave to the church. Uh, after it's all finished, I'm going to frame it and it will be something that we can put up when we have our own church building where we can leave things up. All right? you for all the details.